Good morning. Welcome back to my time left and hardcore vanilla Minecraft playthrough. In the previous episode, I have decided to work primarily in the mines. And, um, if my calculations are correct, I am just four meters above bedrock. Um, I've already got a diamond pickaxe, and I want to leave that diamond alone until I get a fortune enchantment on my diamond pickaxe. And that will allow me to pick up more than one diamond whenever I mine a block. <laughs> but, unfortunately, enchantments are far off in the distant future. In this episode, I am going to devote my entire time and labor to finding gold. I really need to put myself on a circadian rhythm or a schedule. And I cannot just keep running up and down the stairs at random to peek outside. So, I'm going to stay down here until I get enough gold to put together a clock. And I should inform you that I'm not using the standard Minecraft default texture for the clock because it is stupid AF. <coughs> Instead, I have sought out a texture pack online on the Minecraft forum somewhere where I have located someone who took the time to take the Minecraft clock texture and they converted it into a digital clock. So that way I don't have to kind of stare at the picture and guess when would be a good time to go outside. They have taken the time to put it in a numerical digital readout so that I can see what time it is on the surface. So this is the big lava lake and there's the mine ship above it. Um, we probably won't FW that yet. Instead, we are just going to keep branching out in different directions. Thank you for the iron. But we have got to find some gold. We're just finding more lava. So, um, I've decided to go across the hall and start carving out another mine. I'm not really ready to turn every bit of this lava into an obsidian farm yet. Because some of it can be utilized as melting fuel. And we will demonstrate that later if I get the time to show you. <clears throat> but as you can see, um, standard mining procedures while also applying water and mining the obsidian is kind of risky and time consuming. So I'm just going to go up one floor, which is four meters, and begin a new mining operation <clears throat> because the one downstairs across the hall kind of led into that bunch of lava where I first got my obsidian a couple of episodes ago. 
So, um, you can hear my dog aggressively munching in the background because she just has to wait until I'm recording video to eat. She can't do it while I'm playing the game quietly for an hour beforehand. She couldn't even do it while I was asleep. She has to wait until right now when I'm talking to the computer to aggressively munch on her food. But I love her. She's my rescue girl, so I wouldn't change her for nothing. In the meantime, we will just keep mining and looking for gold. Because I know there's gold in these there hills somewhere. And... I just don't want to waste my diamond pickaxe. I don't want to waste any iron on making an iron pickaxe on mining this. So that's why I am just being stubborn and using stone <clears throat> to um, just kind of mash my way <laughs> through the caves here. Yeah. And, um, I once again have to espouse the virtues of speeding this video up at four times the speed. One thing that confuses me is that YouTube's highest playback speed is only double of the original. And I don't know, sometimes when I'm watching other people, like, play Minecraft, or I want to see somebody play through the entire Wolfenstein 3D or Doom franchise, uh, I, I don't watch it in normal speed, and I clicked the double time speed, 2x, under the settings. <clears throat> and even that is like, yeah, can you just speed up just a little bit more? And I think 4X is a great compromise. And this is really easy to do in the Windows Photo Editor. I think um, about 10 years ago, I used FRAPS, which is um, FPS benchmark tool to record my Minecraft gameplays and uh, I think that killed my hard drive at the time I had to go out and buy a new one um, this laptop is the first one that I am using that has an uh, solid state drive so it seems to be handling the I.O. wear and tear a little bit better. I hope, knock on wood, that this remains the case because I do love playing video games. And I do crave validation from random strangers on the computer. So, um, I appreciate you cheering me on while I'm trying to find some gold so that I could finally have a clock and put my little Minecraft man on a schedule. And then once this episode is over, it's time to do a story about RimWorld. And, um, I've got some other games in my Steam library, but I just really do not have any compulsions to attack them right now. I am toying with the idea of bringing an old Commodore 64 classic back to life, but... That's something that I will, like, actually need a financial incentive... To accomplish. But I'll do character voices and everything. I got people all planned out in my head. To do the adventures. I just. 
This is rewarding enough for me right now. Just playing Minecraft and making my own world and my own story. And get off of RimWorld. The game randomizes everything for me and I just try to guide the products as best as I can. So, um, I'm just trying to imagine what I'm going to do with this wide open space that I am future proofing. Um, I've got a bit more iron that I'm throwing to the furnace. I suppose this room, I could put some overstock stuff that could be out of the way. Um, if you could imagine each of these 5x5 five five sections that I'm carving out as a block on a grid, I would need to have a wide open space 64 by 64 sections in order for me to gather up all the cool looking blocks and put up walls to make a nice maze where I can get lost in or whatever. Um, and the reason why 64 is the base number is because there's a website where uh, it generates maps for you and it's 64 by 64 blocks wide on the grid. Alright. So I'm going to put up some more furnaces because um, it's just nice to have fuel ready. I needed to make some more torches. <laughs> Because uh, I am using quite a lot of light to light up all of this area. <clears throat> Here finally is some gold. So I just mash in there and grab it and we're going to expedite the process of smelting gold. We've got the redstone. Let me fill in this space real quick. And then we will come back and we will craft a clock. See, we've got a nice digital readout in the lower left hand corner that tells us, Hey, it's still daylight. Let's run upstairs and see what's going on. And so we've made it to day 26. And we finally have a clock. And of course, you know, once we get up there, we see that it is raining. So pet the doggy. We love our doggy. And I'm going to grab one row of cobblestone. That's nine stacks. Exactly one horizontal row in a double chest. And now you can see why I put up nine furnaces. I didn't just do it because it looked nice. I put up nine furnaces because that's how many blocks wide a chest is. So um, when we get nine buckets, we will then have a work process of refilling buckets and refilling furnaces and emptying them and storing everything in chests. And oh my god, this is going to be so much fun. So... Um, yeah, if you want this digital clock texture, just literally search Google for digital clock texture Minecraft and it'll bring up like an old post from like 10 years ago or something, I don't know. Until then, we finally got a clock and in the next episode, we'll go back to the surface and start getting ready for cows. Until then, thank you for watching my channel. Yada yada yada. Like and subscribe. Until then, I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.